And I gotta go ghost She see I got power Now she do the most And then that gangsters Get mad make a post Bet you I win With my back is the road Rockin' off white So she think I'm the boat I jumped in the water I knew I would float You think you the best And I'm killing the goat Niggas was broke All we had was hope Bro hit the plug All he had was dope I get the last life If he think it's a joke Say she got a friend Well I want them both Ain't going to jail Like me up in the booth Talk out your mouth Then you might lose a tooth Go to your scorer All he know is shoot I'm, I'm dropping the tip I think I lost my roof Now listen to him Welcome back to the Oregon State Dynasty, ladies and gentlemen. Back with a huge game today, welcoming the number two Michigan Wolverines to Corvallis, Oregon to take on the Oregon State Beavers in a matchup of one versus two. Hope you guys are excited. As we always start out every episode here, we take a look at the game sliders, Heisman, everything, eight-minute quarters. Go ahead and pause and take a look at these if you want to. Uh, the Jared21 sliders, I'll put the link in the description below. Here are the user numbers here and the cpu as well these have given me some pretty challenging games to this point um still you know i'm not sure how good the competition i've actually been playing is syracuse is actually the best uh, opponent that we played so far tennessee last week wasn't much of a challenge and we'll see what kind of test uh, michigan can give us on paper they're supposed to give us a pretty big test as the number uh two team in the nation uh, so we'll see if they can do that. But before we get into the game, let's do a couple things. First of all, uh, the Heisman watch. John McConnell, our starting running back, is still in first place in the Heisman voting. He hasn't gotten off to a great start this season. I think because of the new sliders that make him run a little bit slower. But uh, he, he'll just get better and better as the weeks go by, and he'll hit, you know he'll hit, he'll hit his stride eventually. Take a look at the game preview. So Lee Corso is rolling with us. It's still early on in the season, so a lot, a lot of these statistics don't mean much, but Michigan has a pretty good defense and a pretty good offense, but we're better than them in most categories on paper, so I don't blame Lee for picking us, and uh, more often than not, we win these big games. So here's a look at our schedule. Both of these games are on YouTube. If you missed them, I'll tag them right here, and Michigan has played one game thus far, Bowling Green State little 10 point win over them nothing too crazy uh, here are our season stats so quentin brown our backup quarterback has played the past few games mcconnell not great stats so far as you know parker leading our team receiving and the defense playing well uh, looks like they have a pretty good running back they've only played one game so you can't put a ton of stock into these statistics but you know they got some talent we expect that it is michigan so no surprise there whatsoever so that's look at the game preview everything before the game let's go ahead and get into it Let's get it going. Let's get it going. We uh, won the we won the coin toss rather and deferred to the second half. So we're on defense first, and Michigan comes out with an actual a uh, five wide set here, and we get a big sack on the first play. Their quarterback is pretty jumpy in the pocket, and we took advantage of that all night. Our defense, specifically our defensive line, came to play. Joel Anderson, the linebacker, with the first sack. So now Michigan behind the sticks. They got a couple yards back on second down. So now it's third down and seven. Dropping back to pass again. Gotcha, Nobody bitch. to throw to. And Anderson off the edge again with another big sack. And the Wolverines go three and out on their first possession of the game. So we get it back to our offense, our first offensive possession of the contest. We're going with the read option. Oh, by the way, Eric Copeland back in at quarterback after missing a couple weeks with an injury. He picks up five on the ground and slides to make it third and one. We still got to pick up that last yard, though. And it looks uh, a lot harder yeah. than it actually is. We called the halfback dive, and for whatever reason, Copeland didn't hand the ball off. So he's taken down for a four-yard loss. 
and uh, you know this is not technically four down territory but when you're over your 40 yard line everything is four down territory unless it's fourth and like 30 yards so we're going for this we got the slant bubble play deployed we bring back parker on the curl route he makes the catch of course it gets up to the 35 16 yard pickup easy work especially against man to man so a big first down conversion there drive continues Copeland checks out of a read option play to four verticals because as you can see, Michigan is showing blitz here and it was the right call as you're about to see. We like this matchup one-on-one. -on -one. We get the matchup win in the near side slot, but Copeland is sacked. Ball is loose. Loss of six yards. And that brings up third and 12. Uh, this guy, Arnold, was just completely unblocked off the edge and instead of a touchdown, we lose six yards and now we have to convert another third down. So we go with the pistol, four receiver set, middle slant, reliable play. We bring McConnell back into pass block, and it works out as Haas comes open over the middle on uh, just a little over route. He gets 17 in the first down, so that's now two big conversions we've picked up here on this drive, and we're still moving. Now into the red zone, third down and four. We got to pick up another third down. We're going to try to run for it this time and not going to get it. Michigan loads up the box and stops the run to bring up fourth down. And, well, we've been super aggressive already on this drive, so we're continuing with that trend. This time, fourth and three. We're going back to the ground game, and this time I'm going to hand it off to Chris Hall. He bounces off our left guard and gets over the first down marker for the first down inside the 10. So the drive continues. It's been 12 plays, 44 yards, only three minutes, but it's felt like an eternity to me. Second and goal, one of our favorite plays, the fullback angle. We get Haas inside the five, but he does that little drop step and goes backwards a little bit. So now third and goal from the five. And I try to get a little too cute with the play calling. We go with the swing play and a one-on-one -on -one matchup for Hall. He doesn't win it. And at this point, it's fourth and goal from the five. That's not a high percentage conversion, according to the analytics. So we kick the field goal, go up 3 nothing. Pretty successful drive all around. Michigan... Uh, comes back with a big kick return though and this is something that's kind of a byproduct of these new sliders uh the cpu is going to get some broken tackles and some big plays in the special teams we saw that against tennessee as well uh, but our defense continuing to play well on their second drive of the game brian jude vince watkins string out the option and bring the running back down for a loss so another big third down Let's see if our defense can get off the field we send the blitz and nope. it gets home chris williamson off the edge Tracks down the running back, Casey Williams, to make that with the shoestring tackle from the backside. That's an impressive play by a defensive end, and he's not really known for his speed either. So a big play, fourth down, and Michigan has to punt it. Not a great punt. Uh, you know, they're, they're trying to keep it away from Carl Wilson, number one, or four, rather. Uh, one of the most dangerous return men in the country, but it was like a 16-yard punt because he punted out of bounds. So not really sure if they uh, gained much out of that. But a good start to this drive, McConnell, 9 yards, one of his best runs of the day, honestly, as you're going to see. Now we get a one-on-one -on -one matchup across the board, trying to send Pennington deep. He gets jammed to the line, and two free rushers come off the edge, and again, it's Arnold getting home for his second sack of the contest. Both offensive lines have really struggled in this game to keep the quarterback and keep the pocket clean, and that happened again right there. So now 4th and 11. And we have to punt this one as well. But I don't mind doing that because our defense is playing so well. We try to pin him deep with Carter. And Stewart is there, but he just can't get hands on the football. So it bounces into the end zone. And we'll come out to the 20-yard line for a fresh set of downs for the Wolverines. First down to 10. Counter left side. Absolutely shut down by Aaron Bates. He takes away his blocker and the running back. That's a loss of six. And it brings up a second and 16 situation. We drop back into a cover four. We do a lot of man to man to this point. Quarterback wasn't expecting it. And again, unblocked off the edge. Aaron Bates, another big play. His second TFL, first sack of the game. Nobody put a finger on him. He had the running back helping. And of course, the left tackle as well. Neither of them laid a finger on him. So, you know, that's an easy play. Now, third and 21 again, dropping into the cover four. Only a three man rush, but it just doesn't matter. Another defender comes in off the edge. Williamson again shutting it down on third down, bringing up fourth and forcing a Michigan punt. He just cleanly beat the right tackle there. And again, that was a three-man rush, so that's just pretty spectacular. So now Michigan's punter backed up in his own end zone. We almost get there with the block. Wilson making the catch at the 50. He's got plenty of, ro uh, plenty of room to run this thing back. and He gets 16 yards. Probably could have had a couple of more as well. But great starting field position for the offense. Little under four minutes to go in the first half. 
Copeland passing on first down, has the in route, beats the man-to-man -man coverage, that's Pennington. He's inside the 25. So a good start to this drive, removing the ball. Trying to uh, you know, extend our lead a little bit here, but he makes a big mistake. He tries to check it down to Brewer, who is running the bubble route to the left side. Uh, you know, when I was looking at this, I, I thought he would that defender would sit in the flat and Brewer would kind of run up the sideline a little bit and put some space between him. And uh, I thought he'd may maybe uh, be able to put a little touch on the throw to get it over the top, but I was wrong. Bad mistake. Can't be turning the ball over in that situation because that gives Michigan momentum back. But we gotcha, take bitch. it right back with another set. That's got to be like our fifth of the game to this point. It uh, looked like it was Bates again making the play. And that was big because it was keeping a behind schedule, especially on these third downs. So now it's a third and medium situation. They call a screen. Obviously, you don't do that against me and my defense. That should have been a pick six. But we, for real, just cannot catch a single interception, which is super frustrating. But another punt return opportunity for Wilson. It, man, this guy is absolutely electric. I think he's going to take one back of the season. It's just only a matter of time. So the run game's not working. The pass game has been working. We just got to make better decisions. And a great play call on second and 12 after we lost two yards on first running the football. We hit Haas on a corner route. Easy work. He had a really big game today. Another corner route to the other side of the field in space. Beats the zone. Brewer nearly getting to the end zone. Another shoestring tackle to keep him out. But it's fine. We got one of the best, if not the best, running backs in the nation in John McConnell. We hand off to him. He has a nose for the end zone. And he finds his way in there for the big score. So big score, 10 nothing. I don't know if they're going to score 10 points all day because they can't even get over their side of the 50-yard line. That until now. You know, we sent a pretty dumb coverage out there that is not in a one-minute offense kind of situation where you know you're going to get a pass play. So big laps there. They get a big play. They're already in plus territory. Now the quarterback's taken off again, something he did all night. He should have fumbled a lot more than he did, which was once, and you'll see it coming eventually. But just like that, Michigan in our territory, driving, Putting something together here late in the first half. Until then, big blitz off the edge. Jesse Bailey gets in there, forces the incomplete pass. And if he did, it would have been a big play. So we gambled, and it worked out for us. Now 35 seconds to go. Second down and 10. McKinney, nowhere to go. Again, another big tackle by Jesse Bailey. And it brings up third and long. So 30 seconds left. Stop. Clock is stopped. We could still score if we get a stop here. And that should have been a pick six. Again, uh, I cannot believe the amount of interceptions that we drop every single game. We covered the crap out of that, and that, sh that one should have been going the other way. Um, no doubt about it. So they tack on three points. They get back into it. 10-3, 25 seconds left. Dwayne Patton has a chance for a big play nearing the end of the first half, but another shoestring tackle that saved a touchdown and kept it off the board. Uh, but our first play, we got 20 seconds left. We got three timeouts, plenty of time. Come out with a curls play, easy work. Pick up 20 yards just like that. Now, uh, we, you know, we want to go deep. We want to go through the air, and we get the safety in a conflict situation, and Dixon is off and running. Goodbye. Big touchdown. Under 10 seconds to go in the half, and it, it looks simple. It was just a three-on-one on the outside. I don't know why you're only playing two safeties deep with 10 seconds to go in the half. Just made no sense to me. We took advantage, and we go up by two scores. So 17-3 at the half wasn't pretty in the first, wasn't really pretty for the first half of the second, but uh, to be up by 14 is definitely uh, something to feel good about. Our defense is playing very good ball right now. They got five sacks. They're just living in the backfield. I do want to get the ground game going, though, just 21 yards in that first half, but we're dominating time of possession. We have a lot of passing yards starting to hit those big plays, and on the other side, they really just can't get anything going offensively. So recipe for what was a good first half. Let's keep it up in the second. We're starting on offense, like I said, and I want to get that ground game established. So you're going to see a lot of it here to open things up. We start out with a counter. McConnell bounces it inside, fights forward, gets seven yards. We're trying to continue to work east and west so we can eventually go north-south. And we do that again with McConnell, another chunk gain, eight yards there, two nice runs. And now we're going to try to spread them out a little bit with Copeland and some lead blockers out of a formation we don't typically run out of. And there was a lot of meat on the bone on that play, but we couldn't take advantage of it. So we come out with three straight runs. Of course, uh, your, your natural in inclination would be to go with the play action, and we do that. They weren't ready for it. Haas absolutely stokes the linebacker. Take one more look at this one. He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know what he's doing. 29 yards through the air. Great route run by what's going to be uh, the first tight end taken off the board in the next draft. 
And uh, we, we ran this play in the first half. Didn't really work out too well. We go back to Parker. He gets up the middle, breaks the tackle, and there's nobody between him and the end zone. Easy touchdown for the wide receiver and a big play. So now back on defense, up 24-3. I think we scored 14 unanswered points. And, yeah, we're really starting to separate ourselves from this team. And the defense is just continuing to ball out. Uh, coverage was spectacular on this play. We come downhill and make the play. Unfortunately, we can't get the loose ball. But still, heck of a play by the D-line. And Brian Jude coming down to make, uh, make a, uh, an earth-shattering hit. And it uh, should have led to a touchdown. But... You know, we'll take it no less. It is fourth down. They're going to punt it back to us. And the way our offense has been playing recently, uh, I don't think they're going to be able to stop us. So definitely uh, flip the script on this game at this point. But a big third down in plus territory. Put it in McConnell's hands. He gets a nice block from Hall. Rumbles up the middle. Gets the first down. Keep it moving. Keep the clock moving. Now, with that said, look how many guys are in the box. There's eight guys in the box. We go back to the air. This is really the difference in the game. Our playmakers making plays on the outside. James Parker, once again, getting 28 more yards. Uh, you know, if you want to try to take away McConnell, that's fine. We've got plenty of skill position talent to hit you up in other areas like that. One-handed catch by Haas over the middle. A little unnecessary, but hey, you know, you got to throw this stuff on the highlight reel anytime you can. So, McConnell runs up the middle. Of course, we have that ground game that we can always go back to, and we do that whenever we're inside the and inside the five now a little misdirection we use phillips as a decoy parker's around the edge and he dives into the end zone big touchdown and that would pretty much do it player of the game thus far definitely james parker we'll see if he ends up being the player of the game when it's all said and done yeah. how do we not get the interception there i mean brian jude played spectacular in coverage three or four different times he should have had a play on the ball and probably two touchdowns to go along with it as well but our time will come we just got to keep making those plays uh, another sack again continuing to live in the backfield their offensive line was just absolute swiss cheese and the quarterback was running right into our blitzing defenders so not much really else to say there uh, third and three excuse me and they go with a draw we have guys rallying to the football we bring him down fourth and one uh, they don't end up going for it i kind of hate that about this game uh, how it doesn't go for it in those situations i wish it would especially when you're down by 28 there's no point in punting uh, nice run to end the third quarter by copeland his day would just about be over i think we gave him one more series here this is the last one uh, big pass play big catch by pennington he keeps his feet and he's running down the sideline easy touchdown are you kidding me with that catch in that play though i think he realized that none of these touchdowns were cool enough to go on tiktok well until that one what a freaking play high points the football somehow lands on his feet doesn't have his knees touch the turf and uh, there, there was nobody in the secondary it was him in the safety and uh, he was gone so big play one of the most impressive touchdowns i've seen in quite a long time Second and one, trying to finish this up, trying to get a nice shot out here in the second half. Uh, their offense is just terrible. There really wasn't anything that they did well between the run or the pass. They had a couple big plays, but that was really it. Uh, we were just having fun. Should have been a sack there. Th this was one of those big plays. Like I said, if they had something happen, it was probably a mistake on my part or the game just being dumb. That's what it was right there. That one should have been an easy sack. Not really sure why we didn't get the credit for that one. Um, again, Brian Jude getting uh, getting robbed of a highlight reel play. But, you know, ball don't lie. We come back. We get a sack a couple seconds later. Aaron Bates once again. Easy stuff. Now, third and 12, kind of last-ditch opportunity. They're in a five-wide set. We're in man-to-man. -man and an easy sack off the edge. Just completely unblocked. That left tackle was just absolute trash. Uh, was not putting a finger on anybody the entire contest. Uh, first catch here for Matt Henderson, the true freshman wide receiver out of Tennessee, I believe he was. Nice to see. Quentin Brown back in the game as well, a quarterback. There's Chris Hall running the football, the future at the running back position. So just getting some time in for the backups here late in the contest. Of course, we had to run our favorite play out of the bunch set. And let's finish it off with a touchdown. Why not? Dixon, open, easy throw. Brown throws a strike. Touchdown. That was a debate I was thinking about while I was playing. Should I put Brown back in because he's played so well while Copeland was hurt? Um, I, I kept Copeland in because he was playing well and he was our guy to start the season. So we kept him in there. 
45-3, that would do it from Research Stadium. Another dominant victory. Uh, first half was tough. Uh, Parker gets player of the game as well, so that uh, ended up happening. First half was tough, 17-3, but it was much closer than that. But uh, they just ran out of gas. I don't really know, or we just picked up our level of play. 28-0 in the second, and uh, just an absolute domination on both sides of the football. Copeland was 18 for 19. Only incompletion was the interception, over 300 yards passing. Not a big day for McConnell, just 65 yards on 15 touches for an average of four per carry. Uh, he had one touchdown, though. Parker had the other rushing touchdown. Uh, leading us in receiving was Edgar Haas, the tight end, 7 for 90. James Parker had 5 for 88 in a score. He was the player of the game. Uh, Cliff Dixon, 3 for 77 and two touchdowns. Nice to see that from the youngin. He was a guy that didn't play much last year, but uh, has made some pretty impressive plays early on this season. Brian Jew led us in tackles with six. Should have had more than that. Uh, we had a lot of TFLs. We had 11 sacks today. Just let that sink in. That is an unreal amount. Three for Bates, three for Williamson, two for Anderson, uh, one for Jude, one for Smith, and that was just about it. But the D-line, the front seven, really just played phenomenal football today. And it's a big reason why they had one field goal that resulted off of one coverage bust, and that was it. Really should have been a shutout. Uh, special teams was great today. Not much for Patton in the return game, but Wilson was spectacular in the punt return game, as he always is. Uh, total yards here, yeah, just domination. Over 500 for us, 130 for them, 1 for 9 on third downs. We were 5 for 9, which is not great, but I'll take it. And then we dominated time of possession, which I always like to do when I'm playing these games. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this episode. Another blowout, but I hope it was entertaining for you, at least the first half. Be sure to uh, drop a like, subscribe to the channel as well. I'll be back with a recruiting episode in the next couple of days, and then we'll focus all of our attention on the USC. Talk to you then.